Welcome to the desk setup as of 2023. Ah, it kind of looks the same as did last year, but there's been some subtle changes. And I want to show you everything that I've done. But take a look at how clean this is. And this setup, yo, that is cool. I don't know if you paid attention when you were watching that intro because the music together with the sound effects and sort of like the overlays makes it look so top notch. And that is why I want to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Artlist. When it comes to finding the right piece of music for your videos, it's very crucial that the music kind of fits with what you're showing off because otherwise it might just fall flat. For example, if I were to use that intro, but with sort of like a cartoonish music, then it would give you the vibe of it feeling like an epic workstation. And when you add in all the sound effects that you can find in their vast library, it's gonna help you to elevate your videos to the next level because combining the right piece of music with the right sound effects is oh. And one of the great things with Artlist is that they have everything. You don't need to look anywhere else for anything else. If you need some overlays for your videos, they got it. If you wanna learn how to edit with HitFilm, you got it. And I've been partnering up together with Artlist for over four and a half years now. And there's a reason that I say that I really love Artlist. I'm gonna drop a link in the description, head over there, check it out now. You know, I always enjoy making these kind of videos because there's always something that has happened since last time I made one of these videos. It's not that the entire setup might have changed, but something has changed and someone that is watching the videos might get inspiration for their new desk setup or their own cave of empowerment, if that is even a thing. I don't know, but it's fun to talk about how I try to optimize my space and make sure that I can maximize the space around my desk as well as on my desk. And if this is your first time here, I just want to say welcome, hope everything is good, and uh, to all of you that has been here for a while, mm, Love you. So last year when I made my video, I had made some big changes to my desk compared to the year before. But now the changes are a little bit more subtle. A little bit less things that has happened, but one of the biggest things in my opinion is that I have removed the desk shelf. And one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to remove the desk shelf was as every single time that I sat down and had something that shouldn't be on the desk, it found a place on the freaking desk shelf. And even though it looks great having a desk shelf, I'm not one of those persons that can have a desk shelf. I've tried, it doesn't work because it just gathers stuff. The less space, the less stuff. That is at least my thinking. So I hope that it's gonna ring true for this year. But I've also moved some of the units that I got on the desk around so that they are a little bit more accessible and a little bit more user-friendly, if you may. I got the LG OLED Ultra Fine. 32 inch display right here. It is not a great display. I have been using this for a little bit over a year now. I like it because I can read my you know, notes whenever I'm recording a video like this and bring up some search results or you know, read the news on. But when it comes to editing videos on this, I found the color accuracy to be very off. And that is something that bummed me out when I was trying to use that for editing, because as soon as I opened up Final Cut Pro on that display, it looked weird. It didn't look as I wanted to be, there was sort of like a greenish tint or a magenta tint, even though I calibrated that display. Yes, I have tried. On top of that it is a very dim display because it's an OLED, so it doesn't emit the same amount of light as my Dell does. Speaking of the Dell though, I am freaking blown away 
with this display. It has been such an amazing display to use on all my different color grading projects, my Final Cut Pro course, and just being able to see things the way that they are intended to be seen is something that has changed my way of making videos a whole lot. I was very hesitant going into the purchase of this display in the end of 2021 because it's a very expensive display, but I feel like now all of those money that I've invested into a really good display is justified. It feels like I got my money worth from actually buying a display that is color accurate, very bright, and can provide you with a consistent result. Would I recommend this display today though? I uh, would probably say both yes and no. It totally depends on what your budget is because I think that this display as of right now might not be the best option. Take a double look, you know, when you're searching. If, if this is the display that you want, get it. You're not going to be disappointed, but there might be better options. Connecting the two displays to my computer is the Bridgestone Pro Thunderbolt Dock. I have loved this thing ever since I bought it way back in 2021 or even 2020, I can't remember. But the good thing about having a dock like this is that I only need one single cable into my computer. And that, for me, is pure blissma. I love it. It just feels so relaxing when you sit down, you plug in the computer and boom. You're up or running. Whenever I am working on a project or something similar, I usually plug in an SSD drive as well. And I have actually upgraded all my SSDs right now to be Thunderbolt SSDs. And I do know that Thunderbolt is one of those things that is very expensive. And a lot of people are thinking like, ah, that's a lot of money. But considering the time that I save having just the speed of a Thunderbolt cable, when you're transferring footage each and every day, it's a lot. So now when I'm transferring like a full memory card of this, 160 gigabytes, it takes me two minutes. Something that I did as well is upgrade all my USB-Cs. So all my USB-C cables is now Thunderbolt. So I don't have to worry about bringing the wrong one. The keyboard is the Logitech MX Keys. I like this keyboard a whole lot. It is simple, it is clean, and it just does what it's supposed to do. There's nothing special about it, but it is rapid fast whenever I want to boot up my computer. It starts it up in an instant. The only downside with it that I've noticed is that I wish that the battery time was a little bit longer on it. But that combined with MX Master 3 is one hell of a combo. I, it's like, I, I don't feel the need to buy either a new mouse or a keyboard in the foreseeable future because this works very well. And when it comes to my personal editing technique is that I have everything that I need on this hand. So everything is sort of like up to left hand side. I don't have to move this, which is great. And uh, for those of you that signed up to my Final Cut Pro course, you already know how to do stuff, right? Huh? The speakers or uh, the monitors or uh, noise makers, if you may, is from a company that's called Adam Odom. Uh, Adam Odom. <laughs> it's not called Adam Odom. Adam uh, or Odom. I don't know how you pronounce it, but Odom uh, Audio. I think they're based in Germany or something like that, but these speakers are very good for what I do. You can definitely hear the details when you're working with, you know, those small sound effects and those perfectly scored tracks that you can find on Artlist and that good stuff. Highly recommend it. And to power them, I have a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, USB plugged in to the dock, and everything is just working its magic into the computer. We have the Belkin Wireless accessory charger, if you may. This is something that I've been using at home as well as here for the last one and a half years. I think it's great to be able to just smack my phone, my Apple Watch and my AirPods in the same place and know that I can just grab it with an arm's reach because the downside with my previous desk setup was that I had to sort of like lean in and grab stuff. And when you have to lean into something, then it's too far from you. It should always be within arm's reach. And of course, to power all of this, I am using my MacBook Pro M1 Max 64 gigabytes of RAM. It is hands down one of the best computers that I have ever used to this day, and I love it. There's no incitement for me to buy a new computer in the coming two years, unless something radical happens. Anything that I've tried throwing at it, it has just chopped away. I mean, like if you're a gamer and that kind of stuff, then it might not be the right for you. But when you work as a creator, a video editor and a photographer, it's just one of those tools that make it fun to work. 
you know. So now that we've been on this side, it's time to go over to this side. We're, we're not gonna jump to this just yet. This entire setup is probably the biggest thing that's grown out of this desk in the last year. First things first, we have the EDC tray from Dango Products. I love having this tray here so that when I get to the studio, I can just dump my stuff into this tray. And I know that my wallet, my knife, my keys are all in the same place. Just having one of those trays that blends in with the environment. I, I like that. I think it's cool. And right next to it, we have the iPad mini, which is a great companion. So if I'm recording a video, for example, I just open my notes on the iPad mini and then I can just scroll back. Okay, talk to the camera and then just look at the bullet points, whatever it is that I'm written down and then just keep doing like that, which is great because you don't need to have a big monitor. And even though I have the 32 inch that I can just pull up, I usually go for the iPad mini. Let's talk about the gear tree because this, is very cool. It is freaking amazing to be able to have everything mounted to a single pole. This top handle here is where I put this camera and they have sort of like everything on swivel arms and this nice handle right here that you can move the camera back and forth. But check this out. If I put the camera here. We have sort of like an instant top down shot, but I can also angle it up and get this kind of shot. I haven't tried this before, but wow. I feel small. Hey, hope you're having a good time up there. The versatility of this is amazing. Check this out. So if I need to record something on the computer when I'm doing stuff, this is a great shot. Doing something over here, perfect. Just makes the entire recording process way more streamlined. And that is something that I constantly strive for streamlining the process. The microphone that I'm using and the audio that you're hearing right now is coming from the Rode NTG2. I'm so used to having just shotgun microphone smack dead onto the camera and then just record from there. Hopefully there's a little bit more professional sound. Huh? I don't know because my uh, my uh, voice is very uh, old man. Eh? If you're thinking about getting a gear tree like this, I can highly recommend it. It is freaking amazing. I love the look and feel of it as well. It feels very premium. I'm gonna drop a link in the description. Check him out. Thank you so much for watching. Really hope that you enjoyed this video and uh, hope that you got some inspiration for your own desk setup and uh, that you will have a fantastic day, evening, night, whatever it might be, va? Peter von Sweden is saying goodbye.